This is Jerry Joseph, and this is an interview with Sound of the Series. You know what? There was times just like with um, just being a goofball with the boys. I mean, there's not there's not one defining moment because those seven years went by really quick, and like it's all kind of a blur for me right now. But I, you know, I have these little moments where I re remember something that happened. But I, it's still kind of fresh, just finished. So uh, right now, it's just one big happy memory of meeting these people and being good you know it was a lot of our first jobs first big jobs so um yeah right now it's too much together you know yeah yeah i <laughs> what did i t i should say stole because you're not really allowed to but um i left with my my miller black shirt my long sleeve black shirt and uh my my lady wears it now so yeah, my lady wears it. And uh, that's, I think that's the only thing I took. I wanted, I should have took everything to be honest with you. I don't think no one will notice, right? But yeah, my, my girlfriend wears it all the time. So yeah, <laughs> and, and such, and I took such and home with me. There was a scene a couple years ago with a character who I, I didn't know, but apparently we were friends. Right. That happened a lot. Like I would be paired up with somebody and I'm like, I guess I'll just make up some history. Right. What was his name? Ambika? Is that a name? Does that sound familiar? Anyways, there was a character that I, I didn't know, but when I got the script, it, I was mourning his, he got shot and I was mourning that. And I was really terrified and that, that I was going to lose him. And, I had a really difficult time shooting it because the way you shoot it is there's other people in the scene and they have lines too. So I have to run up. Oh, wow. I have to run up to him on the ground and he's dying and I'm freaking out. But before that, they have to cut. No, they have to let the other people over here do it. And I have to, after I run, I have to pause for a little bit, wait for my turn, right? So you're trying to do this emotional thing, but you got taken out of it because you're like counting down the seconds before you got to like cry or whatever. And no matter how many times I did it, it was a mess. I was not connected to this at all. I didn't, first of all, I didn't know the guy. I didn't know why, what just happened. I don't know, man. It was just a big mess. But sometimes when you're not connected, it's, you sound like you're full of crap. And definitely that day, no matter what I did, I could have had 50 takes and I would have sounded like, a liar <laughs> i was it was so terrible the director actually talked to me about it later man he was like i didn't feel like you were connected to that i was like i wasn't so you should go try and track down that scene i i don't know like listen i don't want to be negative but i don't know if i ever got a favorite scene out of this show I'll be honest with you, I don't think I did. I think I got a bunch of stuff from different scenes that maybe could make one scene, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's more about the, the days, the day on set, like I was saying, that drive home, the, the way I felt, exhilarated. And you know what, I'll, I will say the scene with me and Gaia, when I popped homeboy and I took the knife, that was, uh, I went home pretty proud of that scene. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed that one. I came on the show midway through season one and I was only supposed to come on for an episode and we know how that ended up. But for the first couple seasons, to be honest with you, I never really felt like, you know, kind of being, I just kept to myself a little bit. I'd play, but I, I knew like this group already kind of existed and I would, you know, I didn't want to like impose my will because a lot of times actors come on to something and they're like, hey, hey, everybody, hey, hey. So I tried to be cool, you know, but by season three or f maybe four, actually, that's when we got really tight. I never really hung out with any of the cast prior to that. Um, I, I would, yeah, you know, it took a while, but there was a moment where I realized, oh, I think we're actual friends. 
I think I'm in the club now. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it was it was a long ride. I I was often the guy that was just coming in and doing his thing and then going home. You know, so yeah, yeah. Season three is when we got tight. Oh, it's oh, it's a mix. It's a mix. You know, there are people that crack me up that maybe don't crack other people up. Uh, Sachin's hilarious. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. It depends on your humor, you know. Devin Bostic was always kind of like, like absurd. He was an absurd person. <laughs> He's ridiculous. You couldn't get him to stop, but you didn't want him to stop either because you're watching the you're watching his his little show. You know what I mean? And he's such a He's one. He's a one of one, just like Sachin is. Those guys are the only ones like themselves that exist in the world. Funniest, huh? And you know what? Everybody's got their own thing because even when Bob, me and Bob would like have these little moments, like something about like something so silly about like a sound, and we would just start cracking up in the middle of a scene or whatever. So the the inside jokes really made it, but obviously everyone knows Sachin's hilarious. Not with me. I, I think. I think people were hesitant to play with me. <laughs> uh, but Lola and Richard, I know, had like a two-season-long prank competition. That was cool. Uh, watching that, she's such a great girl. And uh, the guys kind of took on his uncle role with her, so I think she had a lot of fun. Just, I think when you do stuff like that. It lightens the load, you know. It takes the nerves away because, like I said, it's like you're in in the group. And yeah, I watched Lola and Richard do their thing. Okay. Yeah. Great. Like they would put stuff in their trailer. I don't remember. Maybe it was like popcorn all in the trailer, something like that. But it was just back and forth. You know what I mean? But I don't play. To be really busy, I think you have to be. The lead of a show. I've experienced being the lead on other projects, and you know when you get up in the morning, especially if it's one of the the ladies that got to get hair and stuff like that, they're there from six until the time that we're we're done, which is often midnight. Not only that, they have to learn the lines for the next day. So, I I would say in that situation, in between takes, you're revisiting the stuff you got to do tomorrow. Um, but for for me, especially on this show, I mean, I I don't think you could ask for ask for an easier job. You know what I mean? I would I would I would often come in because I would you know my hair was already done, my my, my beard. I'd get there, whatever. We'll say eight eight a.m. I'd get there, hair and makeup. They check me, make sure it's all good. It's all good. I go to the trailer. We're gonna shoot two hours after that, uh, roughly. Go to set, block it. Which is when the whole crew is around, and you know you figure out where you're gonna put the marks and how do you, you map out the scene. You do that, confirm the blocking. You go back and chill for what could be an hour. You never know, and then you come back and sh you know you'll 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 rehearse, do that take, and then just in between these takes, you're basically sitting down. Are you gonna smoke a cigarette? So most of the time spent on set for me is often. Waiting to go to set. Sometimes, <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, you know the leads of the show, Bob and Eliza. They could, they always had to be be on. You know what I mean. For me, it was just pretty pretty lazy time. Pretty lazy time. I never had a line to learn for the next day. So <laughs> easy, easy. It was different for for everybody. I noticed a lot of like, I saw a lot of people like rejecting the sadness of it. You know, it's like, nah, that's all good. That's all good. That's, yeah, that's all good. Up until the very end, I you know I was lucky that I I was wrapped out at a time where they were going to keep shooting a couple other scenes. So that made it a little easier for me you know everybody they clap each other out and they show their respects and give each other hugs but once that's done you can just kind of slide out and not have to be there and maybe maybe get sad or really think about what's happening right so um for myself it was bittersweet it was bittersweet i was happy happy 
and proud of the work everyone did. I was happy, happy to go home. But you know, a good thing is like a, a lot of us know each other really well, and a lot of us are friends outside of the show. So when you know that isn't going to change, it makes it a little easier. You know what I mean? You're going to keep keep a lot of these people around. Well, you're going to forget a lot of people. Trust me. But you're going to keep a lot of people around. So for me, it wasn't that sad. They're my still my friends. Well, my last scene was a group shot. Okay. Um, my last scene was the group shot. <clears throat> the show's finished, right? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> on the beach, on the beach. So Sachin and I both finished at the same time. And there was no lines involved or anything. But you, you remember that scene was a big hug. So the hug was kind of like literally the last time that we we're going to do it. So, um, but you know what? They shot for about another week after. So I think they would be better at answering that than me. I kind of just slid out, but no, it hasn't been sad for me yet. You know, I, I thought about it the other day and uh, I was like, damn, I, I was watching something and everybody was on the screen and I was like, damn, we're never going to be on screen together again. And that really hit me, you know, but again, still friends.